26 minutes to the hour of 8. A very warm welcome for those that are just joining us. If you have been with us right from 6.30 when Morning at 10 TV began, you are much appreciated. We are in the Kickstarter segment of the program and uh, we are going to be looking at what is fanning the flames of politics in the country today. We have a series of events that are going on including what appears to be mobilization and taking positions ahead of 2026 when the general elections will be held. The latest twist in that particular endeavor across board is the standoff between the Uganda police and the National Unity Platform on the mobilization drive that has been owned by the party president Robert Chagulani Sentamu across the country. We shall be looking at why and whether it's actually going to stand. Let me introduce my guests who will be helping us understand the dynamics, but also bringing us up to speed with what exactly we should be looking at as a country going forward. I'm joined by Captain Francis Babu, a former member of parliament, a Kampala Central, a member of the National Resistance Senior Movement, citizens. senior citizen, seasoned political commentator. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And good morning to you. And a very good, morning good morning to the panelists. And yes. Good morning to everybody watching us this morning. We are also joined by Dr. Arthur Bainomujisha, Executive Director at the Advocates Coalition for Development environment and Environment. And environment. But a seasoned a political commentator too. Many thanks for making time. Thank you and good morning viewers and listeners. We also have in studio have been uh, reliably informed that he is <laughs> the money bags for the National Unity Platform. Party Treasurer Benjamin Katana, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Good morning to you and uh, all our viewers. I'm glad to be part of this discussion. Uh, thank you for making time, gentlemen. Today we are discussing the impetus that has been created by the latest spat between the Uganda police and uh, the National Unity Platform ahead of 2026. Why do I say ahead of 2026? The posturing and position taking is taking shape, whether it's within NOOP, FDC, DP or NRM. So. The players are out and about, and we cannot ignore the fact that that is taking place. But first and foremost, allow me ask the treasurer at the National Unity Platform, who in this particular few minutes that we shall be discussing will speak on behalf of the National Unity Platform. Where are we when it comes to the communication that was issued by the Uganda Police Force on the next uh, wave of uh, mobilization rallies by the, pres the president or principal of the party. Uh, thank you very much. <coughs> I'll, give, I'll begin from the point of uh, the question you asked, the, the communication from Uganda Police Force, mm. which was signed off by the Deputy Inspector General of Police, which we find um, unfortunate, partisan in nature, mm. and illegal. The said directive, in the said directive, the Deputy Inspector General of Police tries to reenact what was nullified by the Constitutional Court in mm -hmm. the case of Mwanga Chivumbi versus Attorney General regarding the powers of the police relating to public gatherings, mm -hmm. assemblies, and rallies. And our position, as communicated by the party president the other day during the press briefing, is that the IGP or the Uganda Police Force has no mandate mm. to stop activities <coughs> of a political party. Because when you look at that letter, <coughs> police alleges that there were cases or incidents of violation of the law. And our question is, were these alleged offenses committed by all the members of the party? If there are individuals that offended the law, arrest them, prosecute them, but it gives you no mandate to ban a political party in effect. Because if you say we are halting your activities, we are in effect saying the political party should go into limbo which is over and above the mandate of the police force. Number two, when you look at the contents of that letter, 
you you will see that the, the, the police is actually giving evidence of what has been said <coughs> previously that a big section of the police force has been dragged into partisan politics because as the inspector general of police you have no business labeling political political actors mm -hmm. say they are bullying they are, i think you even used words like hooligans mob and uh, so which is unfortunate that the inspector general of police can lower himself to a level of participating in partisan politics moreover written in that statement so we we find the contents and the letter unfortunate and unlawful and like we mentioned earlier we have no responsibility to abide by orders that are not anchored on the law because the inspector general of police or anybody in that capacity or above must also conduct himself or herself within the confines of the law number three when you look at that document the inspector general of police or the deputy because i'm sure he was acting in you know, on behalf of the inspector general of police he he's the investigator he's the prosecutor and he's the judge on significant matters like hate speech and uh, these are concepts that are known and established for example what is hate speech and our viewers and everyone out there should be able to dress a distinction mm. on what is hate speech because hate speech must be targeted on identifiable okay before groups. before we dive into the nature and what hate speech uh, actually constitutes i'd like to first uh, ensure that we thresh out uh, the the situation as it is in far as how nope will go forward in light of the letter because we know the police has the mandate to ensure that law and order is maintained let me just uh, quickly go to dr arthur by uh, no in light of the police letter police has the mandate to act if it anticipates that there is a likely a likelihood that the law will be breached and perhaps this order will ensue do you find this more like okay normal or has the police failed particularly given the tone of the language used in that letter no, thank you very much uh, moderator uh, uh, i think for me uh, let me look at it in perspective mm. uh, what we see now is part of the political history and political economy of this country the relationship between the ruling parties mm. and the opposition mm. from independence has always been adversarial. Uh, the competition has been a die or do. Mm. It has not. Em em it has not embraced. The relationship has not embraced a democratic culture, and has not embraced uh, patriotism. Mm. And uh, and I think also it has to do with the fact uh, that the, that politics has remained a mainstay, a main a rivalhood for, for, for people. Mm. They have not one of themselves. So you go into, into politics, then you're able to amass ways and survive and that kind of thing. And so uh, 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 the point I'm making is that because the relationship has always been adversarial, mm. it's a continuation. Even in the young party, like Nu, mm. uh, with all uh, uh, the, uh, it's, I know it has all the, the future uh, the indications that can grow into from the whole or party, mm. it still it catches immediately catches or gets infect, infected by the old disease that has always actually perverted our democracy and democratic culture. So uh, whenever the, the, the for example now the relationship with the police, it is not actually the police; it's mm. government. It's government. because police is a, an arm of government, and uh, and and you see, instead of sitting together. Because I think for me the approach now would be if uh, uh, they think there has been breaches or failure to, get, to follow the guidelines mm -hmm. and, the, and the police has written to NOOP, I think uh, the, uh, what should follow is actually now a conversation mm -hmm. uh, to sit and, 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 and discuss and be able to guide the party. But I think also it goes back to maybe uh, on the part of government because 
every political party's uh, objective is, is to aggregate support from the citizens and take power mm -hmm. in a democratic process. That's and right. so it must go to the citizens. And NUP and any other political party, NRM, DP, and others, actually yesterday UPC announced they are also going on a nationwide tour. But I think what is at issue is the, the guidelines, mm. following the guidelines. I've been watching the, the mobilization with all due respect to my brother. Mm. I think the mobilization has gone through business. Mm. Uh, districts disrupting and that display of power and support mm. is disruptive and I think it may not be their, their, their problem. It's like a, you know, a girl trying to demonstrate how beautiful it is but in the process uh, disrupt uh, everybody. Man, they, they, yeah. they, they, they don't take the blame alone but mm. also government who goes no was authorized to converse and then now you are being you are being stopped. I think the guidelines. But if no uh, 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 has dis, uh, uh, disobeyed the guidelines, mm. then for me I would also advise that, that it is important, even moving forward. If no was in power mm. tomorrow, because the elections are, are in, two, in 20, 26, 26. it's a still a long time. But two, this country is emerging mm. from the effect of COVID-19, the disruption by the war in Ukraine and Russia, and all these vagaries of climate change the effects of climate change. For God's sake, we must we must build the economy. There's a lot of an, use unemployment, there's a lot of poverty. Our people actually slunk into poverty. Mm. And now we are imagining you know, the, the economy grew at 5.3 and it's projected that, uh, to grow at 6%. Mm. But so to be able to achieve that, you also need some tranquility. <coughs> you need even all the forces in opposition and the government to marshal. Because in politics and in democracy, this is what we call riding around the flag. Mm. In times of crisis, like now, the economic crisis, when you are building, sometimes there is a need for the opposition and the government to rally together and build and, 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 and come out of this ditch. And then actually you can do this. But what I see now is adversity. And actually we are confusing the population. Yeah. We are confusing the population. And the, but also, and I want also to be brutally honest, the young mm. people, the young people, yes, the future, their future leader, their present and future leaders, but they have adapted the culture, uh, uh, a culture of 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 of. of, of they are angry. We have an angry population. We have an angry nation, and I think that doesn't take us far. And that anger is not only in the opposition or what; it's everywhere, everywhere. And that's why there's a need for soul searching for this country. And actually proposing a national conference to sit together and map out uh, and, and agree on how to, how to build democratic parties, mm. democratic systems. We need to build democratic systems. So when you come to power, actually you can build on what has been there, but if we come to power with anger and, and violence, you beget violence. And I don't think this country should, should go back to that. Uh, Captain Francis Babu, mm -hmm. listening to Dr. Arthur Bainomo Gisha, I realize that he is not happy with the fact that the actors who ought to offer direction are choosing to be diversionary because of uh, selfish interest. You will uh, submit on that. But looking at the way political rallies have been conducted, there are incidents that are usually isolated where there is a bit of uh, somebody smashing into another person's business or completely disorganizing a particular set of uh, structures at any one point in time. These incidents do happen even at rallies that are uh, conducted by the National Resistance Movement. But the police has never been seen to act with the same decisiveness when such isolated incidents occur where the principal or a leader is not necessarily responsible for how the people acted. Do you think the police yes. is overreacting? I, I, I think the, the doctor did bring out a few things, but let's be very careful. Mm. Let's look at the actors on this stage we are talking about. We are talking about the political class, mm. we are talking about the elite of this country, and we are talking about the population. The population, yeah. We are also talking about systems we have borrowed. Secondly, we, we've got what they call historical amnesia on politics. Mm. We forget what has happened. We seem to, to think things have happened today. Mm. This is a continuation of a lot of problems starting from the days of colonial rule. Mm. There's something in the colonial rule which was used, it was called divide and rule. 
and it is a system which is being used today not only by this uh, country by all countries mm -hmm. people divide people so that they can rule them now after we've said this and done the next question will be do, do this model of multi-party system do we understand it does it work does it work for us the, uh, uh, you see, let's forget about moot courts. Mm. Eh? We sit here and talk about courts and law. And, yeah, it's fantastic. It's good for, 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 for the law school, for us to beat each other in, uh, in, in, in words. And words yeah. But here we are talking about people's lives. We are putting people's lives on our interests, the elite, the political class of this country which does not seem to understand the multi-party system. They are killing the multi-party system. In 1963, they killed the multi-party system when the opposition crossed the floor and went on the other side and we, the multi-party system ended. In 1980, same thing happened. In now, the same thing is happening. People are moving from one party to another. It, it's a game. So when, when uh, the doctor says, oh, this is for, for, for making money, <laughs> uh, people go into this thing to make money, I actually agree with him. Now, let's look at all this. The, what you're talking about, these things you're talking about, police, what, these are mm. symptoms of something bigger. Mm. What, what is our <coughs> problem as Ugandans? He has, he has brought something about, about dialogue. <laughs> the dialogue is not the problem. They can sit down have a cup of tea, talk about good things. When they get out of that dialogue, they go to each other's necks. Now, I don't think there is a Ugandan, and let me today speak for the Ugandans, not for political parties. Uh. Ugandans <coughs> are not happy with the political class in this country. I don't care which political party they come from. I don't care who is in government and who well, is outside. that has been the case for a long time. Yeah, the, yeah people are bad mannered. And the bad manners are now coming out. You see, whenever you have a competition, if you have ever realized, mm -hmm. whether it is football, whether it is tennis, mm -hmm. whether it's, people have a tennis, even, even uh, yeah, yeah, the people who are watching, you find somebody kicking the ball when yeah. he's, he's watching the ball. If he's on television, some of them even hit the television. Mm -hmm. Now, these are human traits. When there is a competition, they come out. Mm -hmm. Either they insult each other, either they beat each other, either they use money, either they, they use all sorts of things. Now, let's go to our country. Uganda. With this, if the whole political class left Uganda, it will still continue. No doubt. Are you with me? I'm with you. Now, I'm telling the political class, and I'm warning them, that Ugandans you keep on <coughs> playing around with <coughs> will soon true. refuse you. You know, they go against you. One, they have failed, they have mismanaged the economy. All of them. Because when they tell you, I'm not part of that, when they are all, all of them are in parliament, I don't agree. Because when it comes to dividing the four million shillings for each member, each one starts denying, I didn't get it, but I got it. But I didn't go there. All this is nonsense. Now let's go straight to this. The people of Uganda are asking the political class, and they're asking all of us, please, can we get good leadership? Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, after we've asked them for good leadership, we then go back to our people. What is this nonsense we keep on hearing? We know that human beings are animals, and therefore they want domination. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to dominate the other. What makes us different from the real animals is that we can cover it. We can suppress it. Mm -hmm. But it comes out Poor often, often with our people. Mm -hmm. Now, the whole <coughs> argument, psychologists will tell us. I'm, I'm not a psychologist, but I've seen people, because of trying to dominate and trying to show their point, they even come and insult each other. Now, that's a weakness. Anybody who insults another one, or who, who uses hate speech, or who uses all sorts of methods, is a weak person. He has got an inferiority complex. Whether it's in government or outside government, you stand up and abuse the other group, you are actually have an inferiority complex. Let me hold let you. Me, right. Let me finish with this one. Please do, quickly, because yeah. I have to interject. Yeah, please do. They, you know, they, they keep on talking about human rights, human rights. Human, they Who are the, they? You, the you, political class. The political class. Yeah, I'm not talking uh, when, about When that arm points to No, 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 no. No, no, I did this. No, no, I did this. I did this. All right. right. Yeah. No, no, no. no. <laughs> no uh, the only time I'll point in him when it comes to money. Money. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. Thanks for the tip. Now, I want to end by saying Article number 12 of the United Nations Human Declaration of Human Rights says, mm -hmm. no one shall be subjected to arbitrary interference with their private, family, 
home or correspondence to, to be attacked upon his honor and his reputation. This is, this is privacy. Oh. You do not go and start going to that young man's home and start, or his home, and start talking about his children, his what? It's wrong. That's very wrong. Right? Let me, you keep on talking about low human rights, human rights. And then you say, I am young, you are old, therefore you are not important. That is not right. In the United Nations Declaration of Human, even all the people can take part in politics. Of course. No doubt. Now, let me just I wanted to end there. Uh -huh. I wanted to end there by saying, <laughs> please let us change our attitude. Okay. And two wrongs do not do a right. Yeah. If I abuse you and you abuse me, we can never tell the fool. Now, let's go to the last one. I stood for elections. I am of a mixed parentage uh, system. Yeah. I was insulted to the hilt. I kept quiet and I won the elections. The man who insulted me lost the elections. Mm -hmm. I am now telling these political people in the class, the more you insult, the more you are going to lose your foothold. Yes. Okay. Listening to <coughs> Captain Francis Babu, and I'm um, coming to you, Dr. Arthur Bainomagisha, mm -hmm. uh, very shortly, we shall be seeking uh, Mr. Katana's uh, definition of hate speech. He is capacity as a lawyer and not necessarily a treasurer. Captain Francis Babu sounds idealist. We are in a country where he's dispensing collective blame to people who act on individual interest. Mm. You cannot see <coughs> them respond to the questions asked collectively as a unit. They will respond to these aspects as individuals with interests, be it personal or related to a party. Mm. How do we ensure that sentiment that is as so, uh, valid as it sounds from Captain Francis Babu is taken care of. Parliament cannot act as a single entity to address the challenges that we need to address. Mm. The president can act on his own volition mm. and say, for example, this is what needs to be done. Mm. But he also has to play to interests. Mm. How do we move? <clears throat> Thank you very much. I think, you know, that's why uh, uh, we have a constitution. Mm. In, in 1995, no, no, actually, from 1987, the constitution, yeah. uh, uh, around, the, 89. around 89, mm -hmm. the constitutional commission was put in place led by Odochi. Mm. And it took five years to come up with the 1995 constitution, which was held as the best constitution that this country and Africa has actually achieved. And the constituent, uh, the delegates, Actually, uh, they built a country, that constitution based on the political history of this country. Mm -hmm. And they looked at what has gone uh, and tried to. And so for me, we come back. We come back, of course, to the framers of that constitution and still uh, uh, pick from people like uh, uh, Captain, Captain Babu. Yeah. Captain Babu, why I'm excited about his, uh, his performance, he's put it a notch higher mm -hmm. as, as actually as a statesman. I see a statesman Thank you in, Cap in Captain Babu. He's put he pitched it there. And I think we need to we need to actually pick from that and and build this country. We are still in the in the in the challenge of nation building. This nation, the, the construction of this country is not yet complete. Mm. And so we are bound to make these mistakes. And what we this country needs now are statesmen and women who look at the bigger picture of this country and try to mold to mold this country, to mold these people. But of course, that to happen. That's why I talked about the, the National Conference. Mm. The National Conference reforms the Constitution. I think time has come for us to look at our 1995 Constitution and, and actually look at these proposals, which have been there actually for a long, long time, mm. and try to bring the country together to discuss the issues that actually face us and continue to build this country and build the culture. If you go into a country like the U.S., they have what they, there's an American culture. It's a democratic culture. They can do everything, but they will not do no harm. When America is at war, they have what they call riding around the what? The flag. The party politics will disappear. They run around the flag, especially when they are at war. They win the war, then they go to a party. So I think for us now, uh, let's go back to the point uh, of, of continuing to build this country, put it together, mm -hmm. and, and actually try to negate what divides us because i'm telling you if this country and i'm looking at the coups happening in west africa <laughs> eh? 
Yeah. Because you can invite the military into okay. this, and what does the military bring in? Confusion. You understand? Yeah. So the political class is sent a warning to the political class. Please, we have a country. We have a country, one country. Let us come together. Let us discuss these issues. And I don't, uh, I don't mind about the, the interests, money, and what have you. Mm. Those ones will be, because we need money also to do other things. But you see, there are bigger things like you know, you need peace, for example, perpetual okay. peace, and to be able to do that, we need that national conference to agree on how to lead this country together, on how to transition, for example, mm. and, and 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 have durable peace and uh, sustainable peace and security. Uh, Dr. Arthur Baidom Gisha, Captain Francis Babu, and uh, Council Benjamin Katana. It's about time that we go for a short break, but when I return, Benjamin Katana will take us through the what exactly hate speech and the sentiment is, so that we can understand that when you get up and you are on the rostrum or any platform for that matter, what you say, how you say, and the tone you choose to employ matters when it comes to either driving forward in terms of mobilization or dividing a populace. We'll be right back. Do stay with us. Good morning and uh, welcome back from that uh, short break. We are discussing <coughs> the politics in the country today, including the latest uh, developments with regard to mobilization on the part of uh, political parties ahead of uh, 2026 general election. The National Unity Platform has already uh, taken shape in terms of uh, going around the country and rallying for support in what the president, Robert Chagulani Sintom, describes as a wake-up call. But is it a wake-up call or a sentiment that might divide the nation and the police is concerned? Hate speech has been cited as one of the factors responsible for the halt and that particular communication coming in from the police. Let me return to the studio to my guests. I have uh, Captain uh, Francis Babu, a senior citizen. I also have uh, Dr. Arthur Bainomogisha, Executive Director at uh, the Advocates Coalition for Development and Environment. I also have uh, with me the National Unity Platform Party Treasurer, uh, Benjamin Katana. Benjamin Katana is a lawyer, and I would like to ask him to put the noop jacket off and take us through what hate speech or sentiment that is extreme is so we can understand how the debate can go forward. Benjamin Katana, what is hate speech? <coughs> and at what point do I have to say what I feel is necessary to speak to a people? Thank, thank you very much. But uh, before I can answer that, which I will, <coughs> what do you want to do? I, I, I would just like to give context the discussion that was taking place earlier. Earlier? Yes, about the, <coughs> the what you would call polarization in the politics of our country. Hate speech can effectively do that. Yeah, so this polarization is largely born out of bad politics. <laughs> they were talking about <laughs> national conference and consensus. Yeah. At different stages in the politics of, in the history, of mm -hmm. the politics of our country. There have been attempts to forge what you would call national consensus. And I think one of the examples is the Moshi Conference. Mm. You can, and he ever talked about the constitutional making process that gave us the 1995 constitution. That's right. And most of these things that we are talking about, uh, some people may call them ideal, but the, the country <coughs> reached some minimum consensus mm. on how the country should run. Okay. But we should interrogate what has led us to depart from those minimums. And the, the Honorable Babu was talking about human rights as being a moot court issue. But this is the consensus that the people of Uganda agreed to. Mm. And it was informed by what was happening in the world and informed by what was happening in Uganda, the history of Uganda, which the preamble every talks about, the checkered history of our country. Mm. And so when we are talking about matters of human rights, we are not talking about ideal situation. We are talking about what we have committed to as a nation and that they must be respected. So, and when you talk about anger, then you should interrogate the origin of that anger. If you are saying that the young people are angry, is it in our DNA? Well, uh, uh, where the young people the brought from mm. another the country and brought here. Mm -hmm. So this anger is born out if once there is injustice, once there is oppression, there is bound to be reaction. There will be anger, there will be resistance. We can only pray and work towards making sure that this anger, this bitterness, 
does not lead to bloodshed. And how do we do that? By honestly and objectively addressing the situation. Back to the question of hate speech. Uh, basically, hate speech is a uh, speech that um, is intended to incite hatred, incite danger, threaten identifiable categories of the population. Mm -hmm. For example, you can incite anger against the tribe, anger against the race, or hatred against a tribe, hatred against the race, hatred against a certain religion, hatred against a certain gender, or against the section of the population, for example, the minorities, mm -hmm. the uh, people on basis of sexual orientation and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and the intention should be to generate hatred or incite hatred or threaten or endanger those identified sections of the population. Okay. Now, in the context of the letter mm -hmm. that you have talked about, yeah, because personally I was present at Ruero where the speech was given. Mm. And, but what we have been uh, seeing in this country many times is a distortion of reality. Mm. And I think the... A focus the on right, what you were there. The, 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 that, right, the right word is <laughs> gaslighting. Yeah. Where the victims, Before we go to distortion yes, 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 and yes. reporting out of yeah. context, what did you and hear? The, the, our party president mm. talked about land grabbers. Mm -hmm. He talked about a tirade of injustices. <coughs> Never at one time did he incite people against any religion, against any danger, against any tribe. This is the wrong man to ask the question whether the no principle actually employed hate speech in his uh, statement. In if I could do, finish that, <laughs> that point, do. yes. <laughs> so, and, and, and the aftermath. Mm -hmm was that we saw people saying, oh, the speech was uh, tribal, the speech was sectarian, the speech incited people against certain tribes. Mm -hmm. And I was asking myself that which tribe is identified as land grabbers? Mm -hmm. There's no tribe identified as such. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think what is happening is what I mentioned, gaslighting, people trying to distort the reality so that the victims of certain injustices, look at themselves as the wrongdoers. Captain, do you agree with that? The fact that uh, if I you thought your question was about hate speech. Yeah, but the, that's his opinion. I'm not his opinion, yeah. including aspects like if you talk about land grabbers as a trend in the country, corrupt civil service workers, or even thieves, are you inciting? It the depends, population it depends how you say it. For example, the word hate speech is defined as a, uh, by Cambridge as a public speech that expresses hate mm -hmm. or encourages violence towards a person or a group based on something such as race, religion, and so on and so forth. But the, the, the whole argument here, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the picking up these small, small things, you, you don't get to this. I keep telling you, you are talking about symptoms. Did you even hear anything of that nature in uh, Robert Chagulani's... Uh, no, I didn't even listen to it. You haven't listened yeah, to I've, it? Yeah, I've read it. Yeah, I've Doctor, did it. you listen? <coughs> I, I didn't listen. I've, I've, I'm not I've trying read, to put I've read, any of you I've on read the spot. I've read what papers and what people are saying <laughs> about the speech, but okay. I didn't listen. All right, mm -hmm. Captain. Yeah, yeah now, you see, you, you, in this debate, we keep reducing ourselves to a very low ebb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and every time I, you, I talk to you, you say I'm being an idealist. For example, young, the young man quoted mm. me as saying moot courts. No, I say don't turn this thing into, into something like a moot court. Uh, like a moot court you know, yeah. we, do not, we should not sit here and start arguing. Like the question you've just asked me. Mm. I'm not going through to go to, through that. I'm going to go through the, the real crunch of the problem. Mm -hmm. We have failed to tame the animal called politics in this country. We have failed. And the next point I'm going to tell you is that politics is management of society. Mm -hmm. Okay? If those are the two things that we are talking about, managing society, and that political parties are vehicles mm -hmm. in which you go so that you can get into power, mm -hmm. I can assure you, I can assure you, no matter what you do and use hate speech and use whatever it is and not use it and tell people lies, the average man who votes understands. 
And very soon he will decide. Let me tell you, if one side keeps on being difficult, people will know. People know. They know that, no, 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 this, these people are being unfair. But if you use that unfairness to, 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 to whip up sentiments against any particular person or group, it's not good. Whether you are in government or whether outside government. Now, in government is something else you just uh, talked about uh, when you're talking about getting jobs. I've been seeing people giving names of people who are leading a certain organization in mm. government, which is nepotism, if you like. Mm. Uh, uh, then there's uh, satirical, which is like acting whereby I insult you. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretending that I'm a comedian. Like what happened in, uh, uh, <laughs> w w what is that thing that happened in America where somebody came and slapped a man for talking about his wife? So th th those, are, th those, th those can happen. Will you, might, you, and, you, uh, you can play on people's yes, sentiment. Mm. You can use your good English mm. to, to, to annoy people. And there's another thing. By doing so, you want to, there are people who believe that to remove a government like ours now, mm. you need to whip up sentiment so that a revolution can remove the government. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a fact, whether you like it or not, there are people who are doing it. Now, what I am saying, and, and this, we don't call me idealist, mm. we must change this country. Whether we use the method he said of sitting down and talking, mm. whether we go back and say, no, 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 the method we are, the, what we are employing is not going to help us. Mm. Why don't I go on stage and tell the man in, uh, in, 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 in PG, my, when, I, when I become, when I go into government, this is what I will do. One, two, three, four, five. I will not allow people to insult you, to disrespect you as a citizens. Allow me just capitalize on the question of uh, leaders and politicians being able to rally the population by telling them exactly what they've done. We've had a series of elections in this country where we've had different political actors as presidential candidates come and deliver very good and well-written manifestos to the population. The population has heard on several occasions what these politicians have in mind and what they intend to roll out in case they are given the reins of power. Mm -hmm. Are we suggesting or saying that the population hasn't reached the point where they are totally disagreeable to what the politicians are putting forth or they understand but they don't have the power? Mm. No, uh, let us be honest mm. about our politics. Uh, what is talking about? There's still political maturity here. And look at our masses. Of course, literacy rate, poverty, all those things. Actually, mm. it has been argued that democracy, actually, poverty undermines the growth and thriving of democracy. Mm. But there are countries that have beaten that. They are Mar Marawi, yeah. Zambia. They are, set, uh, they are settled democracy and they are poor, relatively poor. Tanzania. And Tanzania. Mm. So, so the, but the point you are talking about, actually people here, even when they are given uh, 1,000 shillings, 500 shillings or what to vote, even when they vote, in their hearts, they are not convinced. Uh, uh, they are not convinced that actually they should vote for you, that you are better. Uh, people, people know, as he, uh, actually he said it, but uh, uh, let me come uh, 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 to that point. I think our population uh, is captured. Is captured by the political elites, and that's why actually some of the changes need to take place at the political elite level. Leadership is very, very important. Mm. A person like Hitler drives a country to kill six million Jews. Just one person uh, making that speech, fiery speeches, and people move. We saw a genocide in Rwanda, mm. and people have been tried, you know, them uh, using the radio, using all that, and, and one million people. Uh, uh, killed. So what we have to do also, actually, and I'm talking to the political class. I'm an, I'm an academic, I'm a policy analyst, but I'm also a peacemaker. I've been involved in, 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 in mediating peace uh -huh. uh, in South Sudan and in Northern Nigeria. So I understand it. Peace mm. is not a one-day affair. Mm. Uh -huh. It's a process. It's a process mm. that goes on mm. and on and on. Mm. So, so, so for me, I, I think we, I'm appealing to the political class that actually your actions can lead this country to chaos or can build this country. So you are very, very important political class. And actually, as we talk about the sitting together, the national conference, why did I say this? Because this is a tool that has been used for countries that are emerging from war to peace to continuously use it. You are, it's talked about the Constituent Assembly. Mm. That's one of them. Actually, we are very, very sick.
that time. Now we still use a national conference. Even Actually, we are very sick. no, no, we are not extremely <laughs> sick. We've made <laughs> progress <laughs> as a country. We've made progress. So now, but the sickness hasn't gone. So we oh, continue right. to use the same instrument, mm. the same tool to transition completely. And actually, we will be seeing the transitioning of new leaders. Mm. But even the old leaders would be actually now be quitting because they can't also that are, does not bequeath to the new generation. One cannot, can't, one can't help mm. but hear mm. the plea from Doctor. Arthur by mm. Nomogisha and mm. Captain Francis Babu mm. to the National Unity Platform to understand that it is a delicate situation that if you choose to play that card of uh, you know arousing sentiment within the population against the establishment there is a likelihood that we could descend into anarchy. I think it is, is a displaced call, especially considering that... Do you ever, <laughs> within, no, within the national... Let me put it in context, <laughs> because now, I don't want to be misunderstood I by no. Absolutely. Uh -huh. I don't want to be misunderstood by yeah. one, but I'm saying this is a call for the political For the class. entire political But class. also, let me also say, say this to the ruling party, the NRM. Mm. The NRM has a bigger responsibility mm -hmm. as, a, as, as actually, sure. as a bigger brother, mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as, a, as a party that led this country from from, from who to, to relative Re peace that we peace have. And, uh, they have a bigger responsibility mm. not to break, but actually to build. For example, that political tolerance of the political parties, mm -hmm. because these political parties that are there, they are legal. And they need to be supported, they need to be nurtured. So the NRM, which is very big, and is in a comfortable position, with all the resources, they need to nurture leadership. Let's give even the when that leadership can okay. actually wrestle power from them. Before you give him the opportunity, um, <laughs> okay. we are not talking about segregating the population. Mm. All of them, mm. the whole population, the whole political class. We say when you start segregating them, you get yourself in a lot of problems. The whole of our people. The young, the old, the, 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 the ones who don't talk, the ones who are PWDs, the women, all of us mm. must be treated, must understand that there is a precarious problem and we need to find solutions to it. When you examine the political landscape and the country's problems, including as Captain Francis Babu puts it, does it occur? to leaders within the National Unity Platform to understand the power they have when it comes to rising sentiment, especially among the young, to creating the kind of direction that these young people ought to follow, not necessarily to play along and to their sentiment. Well, first of all is to reject the insinuation mm -hmm. that we are playing along. One is that it's true we have a responsibility yeah. because we believe that we have a big section of the population that we offer leadership. Okay. Number two is that it is never lost on us mm. that we have a, a duty to provide responsible leadership. However, that does not take away the duty to call out injustices when they happen. Mm. If, for example, we, uh, and I will use the rally in Uruguay because that has been the, <laughs> the <laughs> it, has, of it, it, yeah. it has kicked the storm mm. about this discussion. Mm. We, we talked about injustices that the people of Uruguay particularly who supported the liberation struggle, as it was called, have suffered under the same government. And we mentioned cases of uh, land grabbing, which is very rampant in that area. Mm. And I would wish to add that it is not only in Uruweru that we talked about injustices. When we were in Ruenzori, in Kasese, we talked about the injustices that the people of Ruenzori have suffered. We talked about the royal guards who died in detention, those who were detained for over seven years without trial, the humiliation of the king. We talked about that injustice but it did not seem to make the regime uncomfortable until when the injustices in Ruelo were mentioned. And uh, then they were, the words were taken out of context and presented as a sectarian and tribal talk. But I would like to emphasize one thing, that we are dealing with a situation where the, the politics of the country especially on the side of the people in power. They have reduced the constitutional order. 
into nothing and the country is being run on the whims of an individual. That is why at diff different stages, whenever provisions of the constitution have stood in the way of the president, the incumbent, these provisions have been removed through inappropriate processes and they have talked about people sharing money. It, uh, and so we, we have someone exercising absolute control over state institutions. That explains the anger that they are talking about. That is the chief justice, he's the DPP, he's the everything. And so the anger is born out every injustice that people have suffered. He has played a role in one way or the other. So that's why there is anger. The anger is not because some group has emerged to mobilize them. People have been beaten. People have been tortured for supporting different candidates at different stages from 1996 to 2001 to 2006 to 2011, 2021. And the only common actor has been General Seven because the candidates have been changing. But at every span of election, we have had extreme violence. So that explains the anger you see in the population. There are extreme levels of poverty. Mm -hmm. And there have not been any deliberate steps by the government to address some of these issues. So when we come and talk about these issues and we make our proposals on wha how we think the country can be moved forward, instead, what do we get? We get our people arrested, detained, taken to the general court martial, <coughs> and kept in detention endlessly. Let me ask, and so uh, yeah. you, you don't expect people to come from that point with happiness. Dr. Bainomo Gisha, you intimated earlier that uh, you are a peacemaker, and no doubt about that, a history uh, vindicates you on the numerous uh, times that you have been approached to be able to either offer your good offices or counsel when it comes to peacemaking. Right now, the political space is agitated, and there is need for moderate voices to take the day. Why do I say so? When you look at the happenings within the Forum for Democratic Change. Mm. The ability of the elders within the party to act mm. on their own to be able to resolve some of these uh, problems is suspect, because mm. at the end of the day, they also have particular interests or sides on which they lean. Mm. Has there been any concerted effort on the part of the likes of you and your peers to intervene before these politicians and the elite completely fail? and cause anarchy. Thank you very much. A very thorough order, of course, to us. Uh, okay. uh, I, I had a think tank. I'm, I'm an academic. Yeah. <laughs> but I've been, yes, I've been involved. Well, uh, okay. uh, the legitimacy we have, we have actually, yes, offered ourselves, mm. as, I, as, I, as, I, as I rightly said. I've been a technical advisor in the mm. case of South Sudan. I've been an advisor to, on, on the RRA, and the conflict mm. is ended. <clears throat> Even here in Thailand, there are small things, there are small interventions that we've made. Yeah. We also approach uh, uh, eminent people like him on one on one, which we call strategic. Bring them on board. Strategic, strategic actual Very meetings quickly. to discuss. But, uh, but I think what, I, what I'm proposing now is a big thing. Yeah. When he talks, he, what he has articulated, you cannot brush it away. Yeah. There is that anger. It could be genuine, it could be exaggerated, but there is anger. And he has also acknowledged anger. But there, so there is a need for soul searching in the nation. There is a need actually to now to channel that anger into energy for development, into peace. Mm. And it's possible. Uh, we are not actually walking where others have not walked. Mm. So this, that's why I'm proposing a national conference, national dialogue, uh, which will touch on our constitution, which will touch on the laws, which will also touch about forgiveness and actually healing. So that where we have wounded each other, we can wound each other. I'm telling you, when brothers fight, we are brothers. Mm. They don't, you, you show the other person a pit, you don't you ditch your, 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 your brother into there. So what I'm saying, this country belongs to all of us, and we cannot pursue a win-lose situation. What we should pursue is a win-win situation. And that's why I was saying, even the ruling party, and actually I've told this to the Tanzanians, I'm, I also have some, some uh, leg in Tanzania, yeah, that CCM, also CCM, Captain, CCM, we might, <coughs> we might reconsider who has the money here. CCM, <laughs> listen, <laughs> CCM, <laughs> listen, <laughs> I'm, I'm 
Now you're academic, talking. So uh -huh. I do research. Okay. CCM, uh, ZAN-PF, mm. uh, ANC in South Africa, even the NRM here. Yeah cannot position themselves to rule the country forever. Mm. You, in a democratic process, you will plan to win, but All also right. you can plan to lose. And when you, plan, when you lose, you can actually come back. And, like so, and, and therefore, yeah. there is a need for tolerance. Mm. There is a need for investment. In, in growing these parties, should they win, you don't get a crisis. Mm. They can continue to channel the country, well, and actually in due season, you actually win back the power. I would like, I would like to beg the indulgence of Captain Francis Babu. Your submission will come after we return from the break. No problem. Thank you very much. We shall return after this break. Stay with us.